Hello, Brother Munro here. Welcome to a pretty short uh, tutorial video on how to use the mission editor for C Power. So um, this is uh, something that is actually really quite powerful, although there are still some funniness with it. But when you first load in, you'll you'll be like, what is going on? So one of the things you can do is if you hit load, you can actually load up if you go into original, oops, original, and then missions, and then say NATO, and you can load up the missions that are already in the game, such as Charlie's. You hit open, and it'll show you um, a completed mission. So if you want to take an existing mission that you enjoyed, but you thought, mm, I'd like to try that with a different type of ship, or actually I wish it was slightly different, uh, you can absolutely do that. And indeed, I have done that myself with the Dangerous Straits mission where I moved the battleships around, I'd moved some of the sitworm sites, uh, changed some of the aircraft and things like that. So that is a really good way to uh, kind of get to grips with uh, the scenarios. But... I'm going to assume that uh, you're going to design one from scratch. You want to? How do you do it? Well, first of all, this blob, this is where your local time is. So you want to drag this to the rough area that you're going to be doing your mission in. So let's say we're going to do it in the North Sea. Pull that over to the North Sea. Then you're going to want to add some units. And you can add them here at the top. So you can add... Uh, surface ships and when you click it you can give it a name so uh, ship super super inventive ship <laughs> you can change the side so you can change it from blue to red or neutral uh, you can give it a mission so let's just patrol uh, this is particularly useful for uh, let's say you have um, uh, particularly for aircraft and stuff like if you've got a helicopter and you put it on ASW sweep then it will try and find enemy submarines although they still don't launch sonar boys uh, you have a percent chance this is the percent chance that a sh unit will spawn now you can change this uh, which is really interesting if you want to have a mission where uh, you the player is not going to be able to just know where everything is and go out and kill it immediately. It's really helpful if you're playing a a submarine um, mission and you want things to be random. But be aware, <laughs> there uh, I have not found a way yet. Maybe someone has discovered this. You can let me know in the comments. If you, say, have two ships and you put them both at 50%, um, you can have one, or the other, or both, or none. Uh, these are independent chances. I haven't found a way yet of um, making it so that if this group spawns, do not spawn this one. I haven't found a way to do that yet. Developers, if you're watching this, hey, that would be super neat thing to add. Anyway, we don't want this group. If you don't want a group, you just hit this remove button and it goes away. You can assign the uh, the ship a course. You just right click and you can shift right click to queue up orders so it will go around and do that. You can then uh, change the formation, including a formation editor, uh, which works pretty much the same way as the controls in game do. You can set the weapons um, protocol by default it goes to weapons type which is what you probably want for player ships identifying that the enemy ships work a bit better if you put them on weapons free but that's entirely up to you you can pull up the unit reference card if you wish to uh, directly here so you don't have although you can just load the scenario and have a look at what have you picked but that is here as well you can then select a nation. You don't have to. Um, but let's say we wanted a British ship. Uh, you can change this as well, but I 
it will auto pick this for you. And then you choose your unit type, say a battle class, and then we can pick a particular battle class. And then you must press this and add unit. You can add multiple units <laughs> if you wish. For instance, we could add the three battle class destroyers that are in the game. And now we can adjust their formation in the formation so they don't spawn on top of each other. If you zoom in, it will actually show you on the map, uh, which is kind of cool. We can choose their loadout, but not for a ship because they don't only have one. This allows you to change their nation. So these will spawn as British ships. But if you wanted, you could say, nope, nation override, Canada. And they will spawn with Canadian flags, which is very cool. You can choose their speed. Uh, I think default is ahead two thirds. So this can be changed. Uh, very helpful if you have, say, submarines and things. Uh, if you do have submarines, you can change the depth, which I'll show off as well. Uh, you can change their skill. I don't actually know what this does. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can change that. You can change their stores so they don't have as many missiles, but uh, defaults to full. You can even start them off damaged as well, which is kind of cool. So you can have like a, uh, say, a damaged carrier that you're trying to protect or something like that. High value unit. Um, I don't actually know what this does, although I suspect it's something to do with uh, AI targeting. So I, d I don't actually know what this is for, but I, I do have this enabled on some of my scenarios. And then we can say, right, well, we want this group to have our radars on, uh, sonar, pinging away with sonar, total ray out if they have one, and all the rest of it. And that is me. I, I have now added a, a group. I could add a submarine if I wanted. Uh, let's make it a Dauphin class, randomly. Um, you, you can add, you can add whatever you want to either side. So you can add uh, Soviet units as the blue side mixed in with U.S. units. You can do whatever you want. There's no, it's it's pretty free. You can add aircraft. Uh, let's have a the uh, an F-14. Uh, can show off the loadout system, so we could have air-to-air -air long range, or the intercept version, or just the standard air-to-air -air version. Let's have an air-to-air -air long range. We're going to change their altitude, so let's have a cruising altitude. Switch their radar on, and then they will be flying around. You can add helicopters. Uh, let's say uh, Sea Sprite. Oh, I should have said, with the aircraft, you can add more to the flight like this. They're a little different from the other units. Um, all the others, uh, you have to use this system, but for aircraft, they're slightly different. I'm not sure why, but that is how it works. And lastly, you have land units, which you can place in the sea, but <laughs> generally not recommended. So yeah, if you want, um, some sort of coastal battery or something like that, that's how you, that's how you add it in. And then you can add in, potentially, enemy units. So red, um, uh, a red Blackwood class. There you go. Um, going this way. And, and that's it. Just add some units. Um, and you can play the mission and everything will work. If you want to go a bit further than that, then obviously you can add details to the scenario page you can change the weather you can change the time uh, make sure that you tick this so that it's the time of wherever the this thing is placed the ball uh, you can change which side you're playing uh, very useful if you make a scenario and you want to be able to play both sides you can just copy the file and then swap it to from blue to red or whatever you want to do um, all of this stuff is uh, pretty easy to work out. Then we have triggers. Triggers are something I'm still learning, if I'm being brutally honest. But this is how you add victory conditions and things like that. So you can add a trigger. It will bring up the trigger name. You can then put a description in. You can also have them disabled to start off with uh, so that they trigger later. They're, uh, hmm. 
I have seen that the triggers can be a little bit buggy, so do be careful. Uh, you can then add a condition. So let's add a condition. Uh, again, you should probably should go through and name all this stuff, but I'm I'm just showing it off. So there are different condition types. Probably the most often used is the unit destroyed. Uh, and then we want to trigger that condition name. Uh, trigger name one. We want that to this condition to trigger it. Uh, we don't need a time or anything like that. This is a let's say this is a blue side condition. And what we want is if we blow up that Blackwood class, so we add that as condition unit, then it triggers this. A unit has been destroyed, this unit, and when it is triggered, that is victory for the blue side. And we want it to give you a, mes a message saying vic victory. Very helpful. You can also use this, uh, which I have not even tried to, to, to mess with. Um, there's the task force swap. This allows you to make a uh, a group go from blue to red or neutral to red or blue, if you wish to. Um, and use that with the action units. So you could say, oh, uh, if that is destroyed they swap to all the tomcats swap to red i don't know why you would want to do that but you could um <laughs> you can add trigger positions so this is for things like um if uh well actually this is not a condition side this is this is just hey this, this is visible um if you want to add a, an area for a condition you need to put it in conditions but you can add these in as uh, this appears when this is triggered so you could have um, a setup where once you've destroyed a unit then it then uh, an escape circle appears and then you and then then you can set up a condition where this is also condition circle and things like that uh, you can also have enabling triggers, so you can have triggers cascading into each other. This is this is very complex, um, and I will be honest, I have not fully gotten to grips with it. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It's an early access title. That is to be expected that they haven't, you know, really hammered it down on all this. But as far as I can tell, this is the tool that the developers use to make their own scenarios. So anything that you see in the pre-built scenarios on the game, uh, you should be able to do yourself. Although I still haven't found out where mines are. Um, <laughs> if anyone knows how to do that, please let me know. You can load a group. Um, I haven't quite worked out how to make new formations, but there are some pre-built formations you can just add in. So you can just go put in... Uh, Task Force 69, basically, and it will it will pop in a pre-made uh, a pre-made group, which is very helpful if you're going to be designing, uh, say, a little narrative campaign um, centered around a task group. You can just make that, and then you can just load it in each, every time. You have the map drawing tools from the from the minimap on the game so you can you can carefully work out right well okay these ships are starting in range of each other so there's going to be missiles firing straight away or you can make sure that they're out of range and all, all that good stuff and again you can access the unit card reference thing from here so you can go all right okay so this lancer class uh how big are they okay thirty-three thousand tons cool uh and then what's, what's the max speed 23 knots okay and you, you can check all that stuff. Um, very, very helpful. Uh, as is the play button here. So you can just hit play and it will load the scenario even if you're you know, nowhere close to finishing the scenario. You can just hit play and it will load it up. And you can access it. Wow, that is a... <laughs> from that angle, it's like, did I just put in a rock? No, no, there is a gun. <laughs> But yeah, that, that is that is the basics of it. And then you can mess around in here. 
and uh, you can you can make your own scenarios and you can also then put those scenarios on the workshop which is a totally separate tutorial because <laughs> that's a little bit different um, if you want to check out scenarios that I have done on the workshop you can there will be a link in the video description um, if you've made your own scenarios and uh, you think they're awesome and you want me to try them out um, let me know down in the comments I'd love to see what people are coming up with um, and uh, maybe do a video on them that would be very cool anyway I hope this has helped as a very brief introduction into uh, how to use the mission editor and I hope to see you again soon for some more sea power bye for now